Good morning everyone. It's Thursday the 25th of February and welcome from the virtual Harry Edwards Healing Sanctuary. My name is Stephanie and the music I am playing at the moment is Wisdom by Philip Chapman from Keeper of Dreams. So thank you for being with us today and I'll just let the music play on a bit longer while we're waiting for others to join in. Okay. Well, as I've mentioned a moment ago, that music is Wisdom, Philip Chapman from Keeper of Dreams. And I'm Stephanie, welcoming you to the Harry Edwards Virtual Healing Sanctuary this morning, the 25th of February. So when you're ready, you might like to make yourself comfortable to prepare for our healing minute. So if appropriate, choose a safe place to relax in and focus on your breathing. So if you can, take in some nice deep breaths, in and out, at your pace that suits you. Just be aware of the breath, be aware of the inhale and the exhale. And whilst you're breathing in a manner that's suitable for you, Take your mind to the soles of your feet and feel those roots like the roots of a tree going deeply into the ground, embedding themselves in a large crystal right in the center of the earth, anchoring you on the planet. Then take your mind to the top of your head connecting with source energy and bring in this white light through the crown of your head and around your head. Allow any tension from the muscles in your face, around your eyes and especially around the jaw area to relax. We hold a lot of tension in our head, especially around the jaw. And as we're sitting there relaxing, allow any worries or concerns to float up into the clouds gliding past in the sky. And allow the clouds to float away and drift away with those worries and concerns. And when, when you're ready, take your focus to your heart center and from here, you may choose to direct energy healing today. So I'm just going to read the great invocation and touch by angels. The great invocation. From the point of light within the mind of God, light has come forth into the minds of men. Light is now anchored on earth. 
from the point of love within the heart of God, love has come forth into the hearts of men. Love has returned to earth. From the centre where the will of God is known, purpose is guiding the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the centre, which we call the race of men, the plan of love and light is working out and is cleansing harmful energies. Love, light and power are restoring the plan on earth. And touched by angels. We are touched by angels and walk where angels tread. They will guide us walk beside us through the days ahead. In the hours of darkness, when our dreams have flown, they bring hope and gentle healing. We are not alone. In our times of doubting, still they understand. And forever touched by angels, we walk hand in hand. Both have been around for some years and both are very touching. So in a moment, I'll ring a little gong and we can go into our, our healing minute. So if you're comfortable and if you're feeling grounded and you're feeling relaxed, please feel free to enjoy sharing that beautiful energy today and we request that healing is a time for all of us to focus on our own healing lists the harry edwards healing sanctuary distant healing folder and we may wish to add our family and friends those suffering worldwide and all sentient beings and we may wish to place them all in the healing light Thank you for being with us and sharing those beautiful thoughts and healing energy this morning and to all our friends in spirit. Well, to this um, Thursday afternoon, we usually have John doing a meditation at two o'clock. Um, tomorrow we have Martin doing the distant healing on um, the healing minute. On Saturday, it's Alan's usual slot. Um, so what I'm going to do now is read you a little story and it's from a book called My Grandfather's Blessings by Rachel Naomi Raymond, MD. Um, this book first came into print about 20 years ago and I came across it about six years ago. Um, so I'm just going to read a little story from that book now. And the lady in question who, who has written the book, she's the co-founder of the Commonweal Cancer Health Programme in America. And she's now in her 80s 
and she's had a lifelong um, job as a doctor, mainly working in cancer and cancer research. So this story is called Letting Go. A woman whom I have never actually met sent me a letter about a story I had told during a talk that had touched her very personally. It was the story of a man who could not take care of himself because he saw taking his medication as tantamount to surrendering to the authority of his cancer. He had seen his cancer as a black hole that was constantly trying to pull him in. It took all his strength to resist this pull. When he imagined himself letting go and being drawn into this hole, in its darkness, he found a profound healing. As soon as she heard this, she realized there was just such a hole in the middle of her own life. This surprised her greatly, but it was unquestionably true. Many of her behaviors and ways that had seemed eccentric now made a new kind of sense. Her own cancer had been successfully treated almost a decade ago. She had thought it a part of her past, but she now realized that this was not entirely the case. For many years, she had not bought a really good pair of shoes, the kind that last, as if perhaps she might not get to wear them out and they would be wasted. She made vacation plans with her family a year in advance, but always bought her clothes at the last minute, as if it was not until then that she could be sure she might actually take the trip. And she had put off having expensive dental work done many times for no good reason at all. She had never really looked at any of this before. Now that she had noticed it, she felt a sort of undertow, a pull to the past that had kept her from fully living her life. Enough is enough, she thought. And so closing her eyes in the middle of the lecture, she imagined the hole and allowed it to pull her in. At first she experienced being in endless darkness. It seemed to her that she was falling but before she could become frightened, she realized that this was not true. In this total darkness, there was no up or down, and she was simply floating in a vast, softly dark space. Tentatively at first, she did a cartwheel to her right, and then another, and then one or two to the left. Something new began to grow in her and she allowed it to send her into a series of somersaults, head over heels. She felt a sudden rush of freedom and began to laugh softly to herself. As she continued to dance weightless in the darkness, the sense of freedom grew until she kicked down hard with both feet. It seemed to her the centre upward, faster and faster, a great joy growing in her, until suddenly she was gone, exploding into a million bright sparks of joy that fell like a rain into the hearts of people everywhere. Slowly she opened her eyes. She felt totally at peace. I do not know what all this means, she wrote, but things seem a little different. Perhaps it is just fanciful. All I can say is this week I bought a pair of Italian shoes. They were very expensive. I have them on now. I just wanted you to know. I thought that was a lovely story. How one person sharing their concerns and what happened when he finally gave into that fear and the freedom and healing he found in it. 
affected somebody who was listening, who decided to take it on board and practice her own version of the same thing. And it ended up freeing her and releasing her. And as she said, gave her a sudden rush of freedom and a chance to dance weightless in the darkness and explode into bright a million bright sparks of joy that fell into the hearts of people everywhere. I thought that was a lovely story and I think it could apply to a lot of us who spend our lives worrying about every little thing instead of taking joy in the present moment. And after all, there is only the present. There is no other moment. Yesterday has gone, as they say, and tomorrow hasn't come yet, so there's only today. And I'm just going to read you a one-line comment from another book by the same lady called The Little Book of Kitchen Table Wisdom. When it comes to healing others, our life experience is as valuable as any credential. Now, most of you, if not all of you joining in today, I imagine will resonate with that because you're very much interested in healing. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here today. And it may never have occurred to you that your life experience is as valuable as any credential when it comes to healing. Healing is not about qualifications. Healing is about you being who you are and being there for others. So it's only one line, but I thought that was uh, also a very nice little quote. So um, I'll just carry on playing you that lovely music. And um, I wish you a happy day ahead. And uh, as I said, tomorrow we have Martin, Saturday we have Alan. And I'll just, and I send love and blessings to all of you. And we'll come back now to our wisdom by Philip Chapman. And thank you once again for joining us. Well, I will play the music when I can get it going. <laughs> okay, let's try something else. There we go. This is the same person, Philip Chapman, but it's called Fairy Dance. Thank you once again for joining us. Bye-bye now. See you next Thursday.